This is Postscript, an in-depth follow-up to the sermons you hear each week at FaithBridge. We sit down with the speaker for behind-the-scenes insight on sermon preparation and more in-depth insights and discussion. Let's join in now. Thank you for joining us uh, for Postscript. I'm Christy Sprague, and I'm here with Ben Stewart. He's just uh, preached the second installment uh, of the series on Exodus. Thanks, as always, for being sure. here. Yeah. Um, I'll just let you all know in the beginning you might hear some noise. This time we're setting up for a Grow Group Leader training, so if you hear a little noise in the background, it's just lots of good stuff going on. Um, but I do want to get right to the questions. We had a few yeah. questions um, come in today. and. Um, let me pull those up here. Um, okay, this is a great start. So uh, he says, I've never seen a burning bush unconsumed right. um, or heard the audible voice of God in such a way as Moses did, but you're saying that I have a similar calling. If it takes a move of God to see beyond the small plans I'd envision for myself, what can I do until God speaks to me? And how do I know specifically what his plan is for my life? Yeah, that's great. What we have is better. I mean, if you think about Moses' situation, uh, and that's a great question, by the way. It makes me wish I would have talked about that in the sermon because that's, that's so well said. But, but what we have is, is better. I mean, Moses had no written word of God. I mean, Moses was the primary writer of Genesis through Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. you know? So you had to have some interaction that was limited, but... We go, oh, but it would be easier for me if a bush would just talk. Right? Well, no, Moses' revelation from God was about this big. We have a whole lot more. What we have is better. The New Testament will say that we, because we, we get to know Jesus. We get to know the whole story and where it's going. So what I would say is you don't need a bush to light on fire. Um, you've got your instructions and you've got your invitation and your order. It's all there in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. you know? So I would say... Um, Read the book of Ephesians. I mean, you can start anywhere, but start there. I mean, you read Ephesians. It's, uh, I believe there's like 60 commands in the book mm -hmm. of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. There's not, there's one in the first three chapters. First three chapters are all, this is what God has been up to in humanity and in your life. Mm -hmm. And then you get 40 commands in verses, chapters four through six. So if you're like, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you've got your orders. Just in Ephesians, you know, we haven't even looped in every other book of the Bible. You've got plenty there. And, and so what I always tell people is excel at the revealed things. I mean, we want God to show us the unrevealed, like mm -hmm. you're supposed to go to Dallas and he's not going to do that. He's going to say, here's the revealed thing I want you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he who steals, steal no longer, but he must work and give to the poor. So you go, okay, am I working? Am I giving to the poor? Let's start there. Mm -hmm. And as we begin to just incorporate these ways of speaking to each other, these ways of behaving when it comes to money, gender, energy, talents, abilities, when we start to put those under the leadership of God as he expresses it in his commands and his word, your story starts to take shape. And does God lay it all out in front of you? No. I mean, Moses knew the end. We'll get out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He did not know at that moment, the whole Red Sea episode, the whole manna thing, so much unrevealed. And same with us. We know the end. We've got the book of Revelation. We know the end. So much mystery. Mm -hmm. But we have our orders in the New Testament. And uh, well, in the old and new, but, but so clear in the new. And so I would say, you've got your orders. You don't need to wait. Mm -hmm. They're already there. And maybe not focus so much on what does God want me to do? Where, where am I supposed to be going? Where am I headed? Instead, we focus on what he does tell us, live yeah. a life that he's called you to live in these ways. Yeah. And the rest of that will be. It's like Micah says, he has shown you, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Mm -hmm. It's like, he's already shown you. You know, people are like, well, what does God want me to do? He told you. And I know that's easy for me to say, and you're like, well, I'm looking for the specific callings. And we all are, but God l likes to keep some things mysterious mm -hmm. so that We'll trust him with what he has revealed, and then, and then more is given. It really is. And so that's where I would say excel at the revealed things. Okay. Yeah. Well, Great somebody question. wanted you to um, clarify uh, the last point, your major point that you made at the end, where you said, don't preach your limitations to God. Uh, instead, preach God to your limitations. And they wanted to know, can you just expand on that and really clarify what you mean by that? Yeah, I think with, with any call of God, even in his word, you know, just reading his word, you see a call of God. There, there's a temptation in us 
to come up with why we're the exception, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'll meet with students that, you know, that, that well, this that passage I said in Ephesians, work so you can give to the poor. They go, well, I don't have any money. And the idea there is so I don't, mm -hmm. I'm exempted from living a generous lifestyle. I'm like, well, I mean, Jesus said, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Jesus is like, well, then just sell something. I mean, that was Jesus' mentality. You're like, that's, we don't think like that. We're like, well, no, it's my stuff, you know? But God's like, no, I want you to live in generosity. And it sounds counterproductive to us. Well, then I won't have stuff. Mm -hmm. But in that context, Jesus said, sell your possessions, give to the poor, and your father will, will meet your needs. Well, how? With what? How are you getting? He's like, I'm not going to tell you. I just, I want you to see if I'll actually do it. Mm -hmm. And trust me. And so we say, well, Lord, I have financial limitations. I can't do that. He says, don't, don't look in the face of God and say, sorry, God, I don't have enough money to do what you want. Like, he's like, no, obey me and watch me provide. You know? Mm -hmm. um, he calls us to forgive those who's hurt, who've hurt us. And for many of us, we say, I can't. You don't know what they've done. And what you're saying is, God, their sin against me is, is too big even for you. We're telling God that that wound against me is too big for you to handle, God. And he's saying, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't tell me no. So we may need to come to him and say, it's really big. I can't imagine forgiving that person. But we don't tell God, and therefore I won't, and therefore I can't. He's not interested in that. Mm -hmm. You know, We tell him, yeah, I'm really wounded. I'm hurt. You have to help me. And that's where he speaks to us like he does to Moses. Yeah, that's, that was always the plan that we would do this together, you know? So does that make sense? I'm not yeah, talking about, uh, like, that's where we, we always, uh, God calls us to, to share our faith with others. I'm not good at that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, no. There's very few people in the world that are like, I'm fantastic at that. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, I think there's the realization, too, that once you start looking at your limitations, sometimes that can be all that you look at. Oh, yeah. Right? It'll stop everything. And that's where uh, you mentioned Moses um, having uh, fear and shame and guilt and failure in his past. And yeah. we start looking at that. And, of course, we take our eyes off of him and look at that. And that's all we see. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we've got to see. Yeah. Because that would be another great one. We say, I can't get involved in ministry because look at all that I've done. Mm -hmm. And God says, well, look at all that I've done to forgive and heal and restore. So that's where I think we're quick to dismiss God uh, when we really shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying we, because we, we all do that. The trick is to be honest about like, oh, that's what I'm doing and that's wrong and I don't want to do that. But that's what I mean by that. Sorry that wasn't more clear, but. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the soccer mom at the end. Yeah. Um, and Shirley, I mean, just like you said in your message, she didn't really anticipate it would go where it went. No. And she just began praying. And she could have, in the very beginning, said, I got kids. I'm busy. I'm doing this. I, yeah. But she, she didn't. You know, she allowed herself to, to open up to what God would have in store. Um, people are interested. What organization does she work with? What, how, if, what if we wanted to be involved in something like that? What would we do? Yeah, well, there's a lot of great organizations, and she, uh, just in briefly telling her stories, I touched down on a couple different ones. Probably the simplest thing to say is if you're here at Faith Bridge and interested in how do I become a part of seeing an end of human trafficking, um, you don't have to look past Faith Bridge. Faith Bridge has done the work of partnering with some strategic organizations in Houston that are doing some great things. Mm -hmm. Love 146, Redeemed, there's some great ministries, Free the Captives, that Faith Bridge has already built partnerships with. You can go to the website uh, under bridging mm -hmm. and I think there's like a whole human trafficking section. Uh, but, um, but yeah, jump in, get involved, just start praying. If you're like, I don't know what else to do, start praying and then go and, and there are ways to connect that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know for me, when I first heard about it, it just feels overwhelming. And you, fi you find ways to, to engage and then say, God, I'm open to whatever. And, and we've already seen God do some things that I didn't know would be possible and mm. yeah well there's lots of ways to get involved with those for sure so um no matter what your skill set is or talent or passion there's ways Absolutely. to be involved totally um, wonderful well we see you again next week yes yes one more wonderful okay well thanks for being we'll here do the whole today. rest of the book of exodus next week <laughs> you're no just problem. gonna fire hoses yeah, with it all on. right It'll be easy. Easy. <laughs> well have a great week we'll look forward to seeing you next thanks. week thanks see you Y'all have a good week too. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. We'll see you again next week.
Thank you for joining us for another Postscript. We hope this resource will help to enrich your small group discussions this week. If you're not currently a part of the life-changing community found in a small group, you're missing out on one of the best things about FaithBridge. Visit us and learn more at the Connection Center on Sunday or anytime at faithbridge.org groups. Also, we'd love to get your feedback about this podcast. Send us an email to postscript at faithbridge.org. We'll be back next week with a brand new postscript. Until then, have a great week.